fun stuff today. I've got a bunch of things for Z9 users. I've got an iCup hack that's 13 bucks. It's awesome. I've got a new and improved L bracket to talk about, uh, as well as some settings changes and some updates to my setting guides and some different ways that I'm using autofocus and the function buttons. Well, hey everyone. Hudson here. Uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Welcome to this week's video. This is going to be one for the Z9 aficionados. I know I've been hearing things from people with the Z6, Z7, Z6, Z6 2, Z7, 2, Z5, Z50, you know, where's all that content? And you know, the truth is that uh, all the stuff that I've done about those cameras is still completely applicable. There's a lot of videos on using those for autofocus and action and landscape in this channel. And I'll, I'll do a video in the not so distant future sort of comparing how you use the two different cameras. But you know, the Z9 is an exciting beast and it definitely showcases the future of Nikon's focusing engine technology processing, you know, shutterless system. It's pretty exciting. So obviously lots of content about it. People are stoked about it and tons of people are moving over from DSLRs to mirrorless because of this camera in my hand and there's good reason for it. So I'm gonna talk today about one of the most pressing questions I've had from everybody since they saw a video a couple of weeks ago with my iCup on there. And, and that is how to take this $13 iCup that I recommend for the Z6, Z7, Z6 II, Z7 II, Z5, uh, and really quickly just sort of take it apart, take the iRing for the Z9 apart, put the two together and have a really nice, sturdy, solid, easy to use and take on and take off iCup for the Z9. So I'll go through that. That's the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna talk about an update that Kirk has made to their L bracket to make the autofocus button more accessible because of people complaining about it. I'll tell you why I didn't think that was that big a deal when I recommended their L bracket in the first place. But I'll also recommend that if people want that, you can upgrade for just 50 bucks as long as you do it uh, in the next couple of weeks. So all that info's coming. I'll show you why the new L bracket is new and improved. Uh, and I'm gonna go through some settings and some changes that have come with the firmware updates to this camera and just having used it for as many frames as I've shot through this camera, you know, Death Valley, Joshua Tree, Costa Rica, at home, friends and family. Uh, I have put, God, I don't know how many frames through this camera. And I've just got some updates to both my standard bank, my A bank settings and my action B bank settings. And they're pretty exciting stuff. So. I'll probably break that video out. I'm going to put it in this video, but I'll also break it out and put it as an update to my setup videos for settings bank A and B, just sort of an update. C and D, the, 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 the night photography and landscape photography, nothing has changed. So that's the way this video is going to go down. We'll start with the iCup. Before we do that, I just want to remind everybody, we've got a free big group photography get together, July 19th, Tuesday, 10 a.m. Pacific, it's free get together, Zoom, YouTube Live. And we're gonna go through your macro images. You still have time to submit one. If you haven't, you can sign up and submit a macro image for us to look through in the gallery at hudsonhenry.com slash office hours. And I just wanna thank everyone who's been contributing and participating in those office hours, who's been subscribing to this channel, sharing and liking videos. You make all the difference in the world. Uh, and I'll just remind you, I'm gonna talk about the L bracket and the I cup. There'll be links to those in this video's full description if you click the title or show more. And I'll also you know, have those up in my ATS links page where I have links to all the gear that I use, swear by and stand by, uh, which I constantly update. And those links help me out and I thank you for using those too. All right, so without much further ado, let's jump in and let's talk about this I cup and how I put it together. I'll show you in detail. All right, so I know how dorky I look with this chest harness. It's something I use skiing and mountain biking with my GoPro Hero 10. But that GoPro Hero 10 is going to let you see what I'm doing with my hands. All right, and I've got my Z9 here. I'm going to hit record. I've got my Z9 here. And you see this little recessed button by its stock eye cup? You're going to kind of press that in with the tip of your thumb, and then you just rotate that whole eyepiece. Just a little partial turn, and it pops right out, okay? Set your camera aside, because this is the part you're going to take apart. This thing looks like a single piece with a rubber ring, but it's actually three pieces. And we're just going to go ahead, we're going to grab that rubber ring. This may have happened to you where you've actually felt it start coming loose and you've had to press it back in. You can grab that rubber ring and just pull it apart, okay? And now you can kind of see 
this thing is two pieces of plastic. And the part that goes up against the camera is right here. And you can take your finger and kind of put it in that groove in between the two pieces. And if you pry a little bit, you pry this little keeper ring off. You're gonna take the keeper ring and that rubber part that goes up against your eye and annoyingly sometimes times comes loose coming in and out of the camera bag and set those aside because you're done with them, okay? So now you're gonna set the piece that goes back onto the camera that mounts to the Z9 aside and you're gonna pick up that Z6, Z6, Z6 2, Z7, Z7 2 eye cup that I link on my ATS links page and I'll put a link in this video's description if you click on show more or click the video's title to see the full description but it's got this little piece that mounts to the six and the seven. And all you gotta do is grab the eye cup with your thumb and grab that plastic piece and kind of pry. And you'll see as I pry, it just kind of pries loose. Whoop. There it is, it's come apart. Now you're gonna take that Z6, Z7 II piece that mounts the camera and set it aside with the refuse. Now, you don't need that other piece. You're just gonna bring this part in, and this is the part that goes up against your eye, the flesh part, not the part that has the little markings and the indents to go up against the camera. So think about which eye you use. I'm right-eyed, so I want that cup to go off to the side of my face to the right. It isn't gonna be as easy to rotate as it is on the Z62 and Z72. You're just gonna take that, and you're gonna kind of stretch it, and it fits right on there where the old little rubber piece and plastic keeper fit on the Z9 eye cup. Now, I, I missed just a little bit. I really want it off to the right side. So I'm gonna try it one more time and kind of move it. It's not one that you just spin around real easy once it's in place, certainly not once it's mounted on the camera. But I think, you see, there I got it good. That little cutout has to be right at the top. Now you're gonna grab the Z9 again. You're gonna set that on with the little cutout just a little bit slanted off to the left. Set it in place, you'll feel it kind of lock in and you just twist it. Boom, there it is. Click, it'll make, oh, let me do that one more time because I think I was a little out of my GoPro's frame. You're gonna set it in there, you're gonna feel it kind of drop in place and you twist and it makes a little positive click. All right, and you are done. You have an eye cup on your Z9 ready to go. All right, that's the cheap and easy way to set up an eye cup on your Z9. And I know that Hoodman's coming out with one. This one is 13 bucks. I'm sure Hoodman's will be 40 bucks. If you want the Hoodman, go ahead and get the Hoodman. Hoodman, this works just as well. All right, let's talk L brackets really fast. We're done with the eye cup. I've got a new L bracket. It's the new version two from Kirk. It addressed some people's concerns, which really weren't a big concern of mine, but they made it even more better. So I'm gonna show you what's different about it. You know, I originally started out with the small rig L bracket. That's the first one I got a hold of. It was nice, it felt good in the hand, but it had a tremendous amount of flex when it was mounted with the camera vertical. Some people said, well, if you leave your strap lug, you know, the little triangle for the strap crushed between it and the body, it stiffened it up. And I'm like, e you shouldn't need to do that. So the minute Kirk came out with theirs and it was nice and rigid and stiff and gave me access to all the ports that I wanted, I was a complete convert. I loved it. You know, plus you get the QD port, built-in tool. You know, the, the, the small rig has a built-in tool, but it's just not nearly as nicely machined and made. Super lightweight, felt good in the hand holding the camera in its vertical position. It's comfortable in the palm, you know, really well designed. Plus, I just love the people at Kirk. So I love working with them anytime I can because they're great. Kirk and Acrotech are both just wonderful groups of people making awesome camera support gear. All right, so enough with that. Some people complained because the way this thing came down, it blocked the autofocus button unless you had a small finger or stuck your pinky in around it. Now, the new version, that's the change. It has this little this little arched cutout right there. Make sure you can see it. The, the, it it arches right there around for real easy access to that button. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of this button, and the reason is that when you're shooting with a long lens, you have to come way back to the body, which is ungainly, to hit it. I'd rather program it to a lens button, because most of the time you're working with a long lens when you're shifting autofocus options really quickly anyway. And the other thing about it is that by pressing this button, you really only get access to the autofocus mode, you know, AFC, AFS, AFF, and video mode and to the area mode. You don't get access to the subject detection where if you go into the eye menu, it's just easy as can be. You go in and you hit that 
that touch button for area mode. And not only do you get which area mode you want to work with, you also get whether you want animals, humans, or vehicles, which is just super handy. And with the touch, you can just go back and forth and say, okay, bam. And that to me, that touch eye menu method is the way to do the autofocus settings. You know, if you've got to kind of put the camera down and pull back your hand to the body anyway, I'd rather just use the touch system. One extra press, but it gives me that whole palette of options. So that said, the Kirk L bracket still works phenomenally, still super stiff and gives you access to that button. So V2, it is an improvement. I'm updating my links to put the V2 in there with my link to Kirk, uh, and I'll put a link in this video's description if you click on show more or the video's title and see the whole description. Okay, so now that we're done talking about eye cups and L brackets, I will mention really quick, I did a whole video on recommended accessories for the Nikon Z9, and I'll link that in this video's full description because all those accessories I still use and stand by. All right, so how am I changing my settings after having shot thousands and thousands and thousands of frames through this camera from Joshua Tree, Death Valley, Costa Rica? Um, I've got a few different things that I've changed, and I know a lot of you have watched my setup videos for this camera. I go through each custom setting and shooting bank, bank A, bank B, bank C, bank D, and set up the camera four different ways, and in that first video that I did, the bank A, I kind of go through the whole camera, set it up, then we copy it for bank B and tweak it a little bit for action. I have my kind of standard settings in bank A, action in bank B, landscape in bank C, and night shooting in bank D. That's the way I've got it set up, and I walk through each of those in a video. Well, I've got some updates for sort of that standard shooting mode that will let me, when I'm just knocking around, sort of shooting from the hip, you know, your normal kind of everyday shooting, suddenly a bird that's amazing comes flying in. I've got a way to hit one button and suddenly be in action mode at the shutter speed that you want with the focus mode that you want at 20 frames a second instead of a single frame. I'll show you how to do that. It's really just this simple. Let, let me show you. I'm going to bring up my camera over here. Uh, and if I go into my standard custom setting bank and my standard shooting bank, uh, I'm going to... Uh, be able to while I'm out there. I'm in manual mode. I've kind of switched to manual mode for both my standard shooting and my action shooting, just so that you can vary your aperture to maybe get two different birds or two different monkeys' eyes and focus at the same time. And I'm still using auto ISO, so you know you just kind of can't kind of keep track that you don't narrow down your aperture and suddenly you're working at the highest ISO when you don't need to. You got to be paying attention to shutter speed and aperture if you go manual. But I was convinced in Costa Rica that that's a good idea. So that's a change I've made in both those settings. My standard mode now is manual with auto ISO. Limited out at 12,800. You can see I got the lens cap on right now. It's flashing that it's underexposed at a 60th of a second, f2.8, you know, 12,800 ISO. All right, I'm in autofocus continuous mode, 3D tracking so I can move this 3D point around and lock on eyes, faces, whatever, and I'm in automatic subject detection mode, shooting just a single frame at a time, not in a continuous mode. That's kind of my general knock around mode. I'm hiking around with the camera. Um, suddenly there's a bird that comes in, boom, I hit a button, and it's instantly, with that button press, shooting 20 frames a second, it's now um, at 1250th of a second, ready to stop action. Just that simple. So that's what's changed. You know, if I want to go in and change what the subject detection mode is, it's as simple as saying, maybe I want animal, boom, all right? So that's my basic, I'm gonna run through the menus and show you how I've set that up. When I'm in action mode, I'm gonna change that around a little bit and I'm actually gonna show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna use my, my little girl, Pepper May Henry. Um, last week I did a video on macro and some handheld macro techniques and my son, Pike Henry, was in that video. And in the interest of fairness, which is of utmost importance, my five-year-old girl, Pepper, wants to participate in this video. So I'm gonna showcase what I'm talking about a little bit with how, to how the action modes that I'm using have changed a bit. But I'll summarize it really quickly first, that if I go into my custom settings in bank B and my shooting bank B, which is action, um, I have set it up for you with this hybrid mode that I did in the video where you've got wide area, which you can move around on the shutter button. If you hit the shutter button with that wide area bracket, it's only gonna be looking for eyes, faces, and subjects within that 
wide area. So that's perfect. It's kind of like 3D tracking what or what or um, um, it's kind of like group area autofocus was in the DSLR age for picking up a bird in flight really quick, erratic, fast motion. You can pick it up in that square. And then if you hit the back button, it converts it to 3D. Well, that's what we've had going. But I found some situations in dark forest, maybe you're lacking contrast, maybe you're shooting a small subject with a bit of brush in the foreground and the camera's just getting a little confused. It isn't finding the eye, it isn't finding the face. Well, I've got it set up that with a quick button press, bam, all of a sudden you are in single point autofocus. It's still autofocus continuous, but it's single point. You put the point where you want and when you hold the shutter down, all it's gonna do is lock that point. Now you can still convert that to a 3D tracking point with a press of the back button focus. It's just changing that wide area into single point so that you can say, I want that little point right there, all right? And I'll walk through, I'm gonna show you how it works a little bit with my little girl Pepper, and then I'll walk you through how to set that up in the menus, how to tweak your, um, your, your, your settings bank videos. And I'll make this a little addendum uh, to the, the setup menus or the, the setup videos that I did for the Z9. I'll put out a fifth video that's just an excerpt of this from this video. Hey everybody. So I wanted to demo how these different autofocus modes work and I could think of no better model than my very own five-year-old Pepper May Henry. Say hey, Peppy. Hey. We shot this actually the other day, but there was a little problem with the autofocus and the audio. So I just wanted to make sure she had her moment in the sun saying hi to all of you. And then we'll take it away and show you how some of these modes actually work. High five. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna move Pepper over to this chair right here. And we're gonna take some pictures of her using one of my absolute favorite lenses ever. We're gonna use the 105 millimeter F-mount macro on the FTZ adapter. And before I do it, I'm gonna run through and just change a few setup things. I'll, I'll put what I'm doing up kind of in the corner here so you can see through the miracle of, of modern technology what I'm talking about. But I'm gonna go into my custom settings bank and I'm gonna move from my sort of standard setup into my action setup in the custom settings banks as well as in the shooting banks. I'm going to B, which is action, all right? So there I'm kind of set. And I like to go ahead in here on my I menu and change my AF area mode. Because if I use the, the buttons, I don't get this finite secondary level of control where you can choose, oh, you know, I'd like my AF subject detection to be people or to be animals. I just wanted to check that it's set for people's faces and eyes. All right. So we're going to photograph Peppy here. And I'm actually going to go vertical. So I'll put the cameras kind of off beyond her in vertical mode here. And in our standard action setting, if you've gone through and done my Z9 custom setting bank B video for action, you know that hybrid mode where on the shutter button, we've got wide area. Right now you can see it tracks her eye if it's inside that, but it loses it outside there. It's only looking for subjects near or inside that box. You know, if I hit the button, boom, it locks her eyes. All right. If I hit the back button, it converts that into a 3D tracking point that I can then take all over the frame. Look at me, baby girl. Yeah, you cute. Boom. All right, but what about that situation? You know, you've got a bird sitting still in a tree. Camera's not picking up the motion. Oh, Peppy, she's still getting over a summer cold. The camera's not really picking up that motion from the bird being in the tree. <laughs> it's just sitting still. It's far away, maybe it's small in the frame. Maybe there's some bushes and things in front of it. Maybe you're just having a hard time getting the camera to lock its eye. All right, so we'll pretend Peppy, hey, Peppy, look back toward me. We're gonna pretend that it's having trouble, all right? It's not automatically picking up her eye that way. Well, I'm programming a shooting functions hold on my function three button, and I'll show you how to do that, where if I tap that function three button, boom, which I can easily access from either my vertical or my horizontal, then all of a sudden, what I have is a single point, sorry, baby girl, single point autofocus on my shutter. Hold still for me for a second. Boom, now I've locked her eye, all right? It's not going anywhere. If I move, it's only, lock. it's still autofocus continuous, so it's tracking if she moved a little bit, but I'm able to put that right in the frame where I want it and lock that eye. If I, if I lock her eye and then switch to the back button, now it's still converting it to 3D tracking just like it did when it was wide area. All I've changed is that the shutter is now a single point AF. I'm not going to hit the back button, I'm just hitting my shutter. 
If I want to go back to having the wide area, all I have to do is hit that function three button again and turn off the shooting functions hold. All right, so we've talked about all these settings changes enough. Let, let's go in and actually talk about how we affect them. So, you know, I'd remember just in case you make a mistake or something, make sure that you save your settings to your card. You can always do that by going in, actually, let me go, not in my menu, into your uh, setup menu down towards the bottom, save load menu settings, save those menu settings. Um, that way, if you make any kind of mistake, you can always get back to where you started. All right, so we're gonna jump in uh, and you know, let's start, I'm gonna hit the I menu button and we'll start by setting up our standard settings changes. And really, we're just gonna be changing what the function buttons do, these front three function buttons. Um, and the reason, well, I'll talk to you about it in a second. Let's just go in. So we are right now by accessing my I menu, the way I've got the I menu set up in those banks videos that we talked about, the, the custom settings, a standard banks video that I'm linking in this video's description. The iMenu has a quick and easy access to change your custom settings bank and your shooting bank. We're in A now. We're going to go into our menu. We're going to go into our custom settings menus. We're going into controls and to con custom control shooting. That's F2. Boom. All right. Now, what I've got set up for my standard kind of knock around uh, shooting, just out there walking around, I've got my bracketing, bracketing burst set up. So if I use the bracketing button up here on top, we've got the four kings button up here just to the left of where the prism would be on a DSLR. Um, mode, bracketing, how many frames we're taking, single or multiple, and flash settings, bracket. If I set it up in my normal way that I do for high contrast, three frames, three stops apart, um, then if I hold down that function one button right here, the top button, top custom button, uh, it'll just fire the whole burst. Even if I'm in single frame capture mode, it'll fire the entire burst. Function two, I'm still setting to those autofocus change settings because even though we've got the autofocus button that does that, so if I hold down function two and I swivel the front control dial, it's going to change let me show you. If I hold it down, it's going to change whether or not what area mode I'm in. Sometimes I just want quick access to that. The back dial is going to change AFS, AFC. Um, it's just a real quick and easy way to change your autofocus settings. So I leave that there in my custom controls function two, shooting functions. And then function three, this is where the rubber really meets the road. So we're out there walking around in our standard kind of shooting mode. Well, function three I have set up to be recall shooting functions hold. There's recall shooting functions, which means you have to hold the button down for it to be active, and then there's recall shooting functions hold, which means by pushing that button letting go, it changes the functions that you program. And the way that you set it is over to the right. See that little carrot on the side to go over to the right. Um, and you can press the OK button to turn these things on and off. I want my shooting mode to be manual. I want my shutter speed to be 1 1250th of a second. I'm setting aperture to f1.8, you know, which with any time I'm shooting wildlife, I'm gonna have a longer lens. f1.8, even if I put my 800-6.3 on, it's gonna to go to the widest aperture, the closest it can to f1.8. So it'll go to f6.3 on that lens. It'll go to, you know, it, if I'm with my 100 to 400, it'll go to f4, you know, whatever it can. I'm not adding exposure compensation. ISO sensitivity, I want to be base ISO is where it'll go at the base, but auto ISO is turned on at the back arrow. You can go down. I don't want any metering or white balance activated. I want my autofocus area mode to be 3D. That's going to put 3D on, on uh, my back button because I'm in back button mode in my standard walking around shooting. Autofocus subject detection options. You know, you could change this depending on your most used case. Sometimes I shoot people, sometimes I shoot wildlife, sometimes I shoot cars, boats, planes, motorcycles. So I'm putting it on auto, and in auto it goes in this order. People first, animal, then vehicle. Those are the things it's looking for in order. Um, you can always change it easily in the iMenu with the area mode in iMenu. Gives you that ability to change the, the subject detection modes without going into the menus. Focus tracking, I usually leave it at three. I don't mind setting that in case I've tweaked it. Release mode, 20 frames a second. So what does that do for us? We're bopping around, we're in single shot, one frame, not 20 frames a second. We're in AFC in 3D. 
Uh, back button focusing, my shutter does nothing but take a picture in my standard knock around mode. We're at a 60th of a second right now. Let's say I was up at, uh, you know, F5.6 at a 60th of a second. I'm in auto ISO, you can tell it's underexposed right now, I got my lens cap on. My, IS, my auto ISO is set with a max at 12,800. What if I hit that function three button? Boop, all of a sudden, look at that. It's dropped me to f2.8, wide open. It's one 1250th of a second, and I'm shooting at 20 frames per second. I'm still in AFC, I'm still 3D tracking. So if I put that 3D box on a bird that's suddenly coming in, you know, I'm out photographing my friends, and all of a sudden I see a condor soaring toward me. Hit that function three button, I'm suddenly shooting 20 frames a second at a fast shutter speed wide open with, uh, with 3D tracking. Boom, simple as that. When I wanna leave it, I push the function three button again. Turns it off. On, off. On, off. That easy. Why is it on function three? Function three is really easily accessible when I'm shooting in a, a landscape mode like this with my ring finger. When I flip to vertical, it's really easily accessible with my middle finger right there. That button's accessible in either shooting position. That's why I'm using it. Okay, let's jump in. Let's talk about how I'm gonna change things for action. So I'm gonna hit my I menu again. Uh, I'm gonna change, I'm custom settings B, which is action. Shooting bank B, which is action. So now I'm in those banks for action. And I'm gonna go into my menu, controls one more time. Custom controls for shooting. And this is a little bit different. I'm not really bracketing when I'm shooting action in motion. It doesn't work so well to blend moving subjects with HDR. So instead, I'm putting my ability to switch between FX and DX, my crop mode there. And sometimes I do want to shoot crop mode when I'm shooting particularly wildlife. Maybe the bear is far away and I've only got my 100 to 400 millimeter lens and I know I'm going to need to crop that image anyway. So why capture 46 megapixels and have to do it later? It's going to give me a bigger view. It'll fill the frame with that crop mode so I can see what's happening with the bear and choose the moment to photograph more easily. I'll have a bigger potential burst because I'm not capturing as much data so the buffer is wider for me, you know, more frames essentially. Uh, and I don't have to go through all the work of cropping later. So, and it's still 19 megapixels with this Nikon Z9, so why not use that ability? Um, I've still got my autofocus modes on the function two button, that middle button, and now function three, it still recalls shooting functions hold, but I'm gonna go in and it's a little bit different. I'm not changing very much here. This is where I just wanna be able to get to that single point, that fixed single point where I put it where I want it in the frame and lock it on the thing that's important to me when all the automatic functions aren't working, which occasionally is gonna happen, low contrast, tiny subject, lots of clutter in the foreground, things can go weird. So, you know, we got, I'm not changing any of these things. You see, none of them are checked. Exposure compensation is not checked. I hit that okay button to turn things on and off. There's only one thing checked in here in the entire list. And that thing that's checked is autofocus area mode. And if I go to the right, what I've selected, you can select any of these, I want single point. And because in our hybrid mode, I just touched the shutter button to get out of the menu. Because in our hybrid mode, in that action shooting, we've got the wide area autofocus, which acts a lot like group autofocus in the DSLR days. It just gives you a bigger target to catch fast moving erratic action than say the 3D tracking point would but it gives you the ability to pick it yourself instead of going full auto area autofocus, which was better with the Z6 and Z7 because they didn't have this nuance. You know, now you got the wide area and if suddenly wide area and using the back button for 3D tracking, neither one of those is really locking the subject the way that you'd like, you're getting frustrated. Well, boop, you hit that back, that function three button, which you can reach from vertical or horizontal and you can position that point using the joystick or tapping your finger on the screen. Well, I'm in shoot, I'm in tap to shoot, don't do that. I'm touching that little thing that says off now and then I just want to position the focus point. So you can tap anywhere on the screen or you can run it around. If you're looking through the viewfinder, you're gonna wanna run it around with the joystick, which is nice and fast. You're gonna put it on your subject right where you want it and it won't be looking for anything, hunting, seeking, changing, doing anything. You just put it where you want it lock it with the back button, or the back button, sorry, I said it wrong. The back button is still gonna convert to 3D tracking. You're gonna lock it with a half press of the shutter button. In this hybrid mode, 
the main method of capture is with the shutter button. That's what's gonna lock your, your, your wide area autofocus. When you hit the back button, it converts to a 3D tracking point that'll follow anywhere in the frame like I showcased. You wanna go back to the wide area on the shutter, touch the function three button. Single point with the shutter, wide area with the shutter. 3D tracking, either way, you push the back button. So it's that simple, that's how you set it up. Ooh, one more quick thing I almost forgot to mention. As soon as you get the thing set up the way that you want it, remember to save your settings. So you're gonna go into your menu, and down near the bottom of the setup menu, the wrench, you're gonna go into save and load menu settings, and you save your menu settings. I'm not gonna do it right now because I have some power stuff set on this. But saving your menu settings is really important. I often save my menu settings, pull the primary card out, and leave the secondary CFB, CF Express B card in here that I use for video and save the menu settings to that too, in case I screw up and format my card without loading my settings, I still have them on the second card. And, and that's an important thing to remember. When you format your memory card, it'll wipe out any saved settings on the card, it'll wipe out any protected images that you had stored on the card, so make sure that you get any protected images that are important to you off the card before you format it. And I have a little technique that works without losing your, your sort of default settings that you have saved. Um, by just hitting load settings so that you load your defaults in, format the memory card, save settings. Don't change anything in between. That way you keep those settings pristine while still formatting your card if you want to. So anytime I format my card, I load my, me my menu settings, format, save my menu settings. Boom, boom, boom. It's a little three-step. So that's really important, you know, because these banks that we use, all four of those banks are not fix their bookmarks. They remember right where you were the last time you were in the bank. So if you're out working and you're changing settings all around, it'll be right where you changed it last when you go back into that bank. So that's why sort of saving a fixed reference point that's the, where you like your settings to be at the start in each of those banks is important. That's where saved settings make such a difference on the Z9. I got a whole video about that. I'll link that one in this video's description too, all about the banks. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the Z9 update. It's such a fun camera. Um, you know, I really wasn't expecting to like it nearly as much as I do, and it seems like every change they make to it, it just gets a little bit better yet. Um, I am absolutely adoring it. And obviously, as you use it, as they come up with firmware, there are these little changes to take advantage of, and you just kind of learn with your own experience. So I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, trip through how things have changed in the camera and how I'm using it a little bit differently and maybe it can inform your own use. Remember, we've got office hours looking through your macro photos. You still have time to submit one. Run over to HudsonHenry.com slash office hours. That's going to again be live uh, July 19th, Tuesday, 10 a.m. Pacific. Hope you can join us on Zoom or YouTube Live. If you can't, we'll, we'll put it up on YouTube recorded. Um, so, Thanks again, everybody. Uh, I hope everybody is out uh, enjoying being creative. You know, if you've got any questions about any of this stuff, feel free to hit me up in the comments or email me. I'm always around to talk photo stuff. Uh, we got a Portland workshop coming up, whole group of fun people. We just had a Zoom meeting and I can't wait to get together with those of you in that workshop. It's gonna be a blast. We're dialing in stuff for 2023 and we should have signups for for cuba uh, and some of the earlier workshops soon um, for people that are interested we've had two people drop out of the first of our two tetons workshops this year tetons is an epic and amazing place if you want to join us there run over to hudsonhenry.com slash workshops and you can sign up. There's a couple of slots open. Those are the only open workshop slots that we have. So if you're interested, ask me any questions that you want and run over there and sign up. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. Be safe. Have fun. Stay creative.